for far too long. Tangents have plagued the comic community. Trashing dreams and destroying careers. Well now, it is time for us to rise up and... I can't, I can't fucking do this. <laughs> Alright, so today we're going to talk about tangents, what they are, why they kind of suck, and how to get rid of them. And before I get too deep into it, I just want you to know that tangents aren't really that bad. Tangents occur naturally in real life. So um, if somebody is giving you shit about tangents, you should tell them to back the fuck off because they don't matter as much as other things like anatomy, composition, storytelling. These are things that are essential to cartooning. If there's a tangent here and there on your page, no one's going to drop your book or stop reading your webcomic because they saw a tangent. And if they are, they're probably some art school douchebag who is sad that they can't get a real job because they're busy worrying about stupid little shit like tangents instead of getting their business together. So, you know, if people are giving you shit about tangents, they're either shitheads or they're your friends making fun of you or they're art students who don't know any better and need to get a fucking life. So, don't worry about tangents. Tangents happen all the time and maybe by recognizing them you'll see them and you'll be like oh shit this is ugly so I'll, I'll fix it so anyway what is a tangent so a tangent occurs whenever you have a curve or a straight line interact with another curve or a straight line at a single point so like boom and they suck in 2d illustration because it makes it difficult to determine where one object begins and another object ends so it, and it also makes it confusing for placement, you know, if one object is in front of the other or something like that. But like I said, tangents occur naturally in real life. So uh, we will take Haro, Haro 1, this is a brown, brown cow Haro, and Haro 2. Okay, and so we'll move this guy up. And right, oops, right about here, there's a tangent occurring. Now... You won't notice this in real life because you have eyes, which gives you parallax. And by the time you see a tangent like this, you've already moved on because you're walking or you're moving in space. So, like, you know, you can tell that this guy is in front of this guy. And there's other information like lighting and shading and other things to help you. But if you're dealing with straight black and white line art, this can be kind of confusing to the eye. So to break that tangent, you want to move this guy in front or separate them a little, something like that. All right. So... Uh, it, it's a little difficult to make this demonstration with physical objects, so I'm going to be drawing stuff for you on the photoshops. So, on to the photoshops! Alright, we're in the photoshops. Doesn't matter what version of photoshop you've got, this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so we've got the two Haro robots again. Now, if we never have watched Gundam, we don't know that all Haros are basically the same size. So we don't know from the information given in this illustration whether the Haro on the right is smaller than the haro on the left or if the haro on the the right is behind the haro on the left because and that's why it's smaller or if it's smaller but it's in the front or if it's on the same plane and it's all due to this tangent where they meet this point right here this is where all the confusion happens so there are, there are a couple ways to get rid of this tangent one uh, is to just draw a thicker outline around the character that's in the foreground so we'll get a bigger brush and we'll show you how that works and here we break the tangent so now you can clearly tell that bigger haro is in the foreground um, this isn't always the best solution um, but i've seen this a lot in some some cartoonists some cartoonists put thicker outlines around the characters in their illustrations or in their in their comics to separate the characters the people from buildings and the, the background and stuff like that. Some some people just do this as a style, like uh, then they would go and, and, and thicken up the border around the background Haro. So it's up to you. If that's your style, whoops. Yeah, if that's your style, that works. If it's not your style, you might want to try something else. And the best way to get rid of tangents without having to alter your um, line thickness is to make sure that overlapping occurs. So here we moved the smaller Haro slightly to the left. So that now it is clearly behind the larger Haro in the front. Um, now let's say that the smaller Haro is actually smaller than the bigger Haro. To illustrate that point, we'll redraw that side of the smaller guy and erase this bit of the bigger guy. 
So there you go. You can tell that the smaller guy is actually smaller than the bigger one. Um, now, one way, another way to get rid of tangents is to make sure that each character is separate, so there's this gap. Unfortunately, we still don't have a lot of information from here. All we know is that this circle is smaller than this circle, so we don't know if there are two different sized haros on the same plane, or if this one's in the background, or this one's the foreground. So this, is, this almost gives you as much trouble as a tangent does, but this is slightly better because you can trick it with coloring and stuff. My preference is always to make sure that overlapping occurs in some form. So this is this is my my preferred solution. It is not the best solution, but it is what I would like to do if I was confronted with this type of situation. So let us move on. We've got a uh, so I I do a romance office romance comedy comic strip, and I have to draw ties a lot every once in a while. So there is this ugly tangent that's occurring here, and it's pretty nasty. We don't know what side overlaps the other we don't know if this tie is jutting out in front of the collar we, we don't know a whole lot and it's all because of this corner thing now intellectually we know what a tie looks like and this is shorthand for a tie but because i see a tangent i want to get rid of it oh it's terrible it's gonna kill my brain so i will have to redraw it now i don't wear a lot of ties so i don't remember what side crosses over what but uh, an easy fix for that is to make sure overlapping occurs. So we've got that action going on. So now we know which one is overlapping and we can tell that the tie is actually coming out from underneath here. We have two other tangents that are pretty nasty right here and right here. Now again, visually, this is shorthand for a tie. We know that this is a knot and we know that this is a tail. But let's pretend that you don't know what a tie looks like. You don't know what this object is. You, there's not enough visual information here to tell you which part overlaps which. So I'm going to have to redraw it. We're going to erase those tricky lines there. Straighten that out a little bit. And then hook it into there. All right, so it's not perfect, but at least now we can tell what parts overlap what. We know that this part of the collar overlaps this part. We know that the knot overlaps the tail. And, you know, we've got this situation going on there. So those are what tangents look like. That's why they're, they're, they're tough when it comes to 2D illustration. But they're not murder. You know, they're not going to destroy your composition. They're not going to destroy your comic because... You know, from this, even though there were a lot of tangents, you could still tell what was going on. You could still tell this is a collar and a tie. So um, there you go. So hopefully some of that was helpful and not too stressful for you. If you see or recognize you're drawing tangents in your work regularly, you can do your best to try to fix that or change that or redraw things. Sometimes tangents occur because that's the style. Like there's some cartoony styles where tangents happen all the time and no one cares because it looks cool. So if that's part of your style, that's great. If it's not part of your style, at least now you know what to look for and how to get rid of them. And and don't stress out about tangents. Like I said at the beginning, there's a lot more, there are a lot more important things art-wise that you need to focus on when you're doing comics. So there you go. Get rid of them if you want. Keep them if you want. It's not a big deal. You're not going to end your career because you have tangents. Have fun. <laughs> I'll check you later. Bye.